What is going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Seafall, and welcome to Ringside News, talking about SmackDown here today. And boy, oh boy, we're on the road to that king and queen of the ring. I love me some tournaments. Who doesn't like a tournament? But we found out who Cody Rhodes will defend the championship against. At this pay-per-view, it's Logan Paul, the United States champion. And before we, you know, talk more about SmackDown, let's talk about this. I have a fear, and people have, I think, have noticed it, but it's not really that noticeable. It's like getting a scratch on your hand versus breaking your arm. Cody Rhodes has no challenges lined up for him. They didn't build anybody up before, say, like maybe a Rumble and Chamber, WrestleMania. They didn't build anybody up or a couple people to eventually have rivalries with Cody Rhodes so then he could have storylines. And then he could win. Lay J Styles in France. We all knew Cody would win no matter what. It was his first championship defense after beating Roman Reigns with the whole finish the story thing. The Undertaker showed up to help Cody win. The Undertaker. So obviously he was not going to lose. Now Logan Paul, him and Roman had a great match, an outstanding match. A few years ago. But Cody is on the path. And that's kind of where I'm at with Cody Rhodes. I love Cody Rhodes. I think he's great. He's amazing for families and children. and Selling merchandise. But we need some stories. What is the story? Why are we fighting Logan Paul? Nick Aldis pronounced was like, Well, uh, you want to know your opponent? Well, here he is. That guy. He didn't. Why? Why is he the number one contender? Because he's U.S. champion and he's doing a pretty good job? Is that the reason why? Either way, it's going to be a great match. And that's the thing. Storyline, we'll find out how it progresses. Next week is the contract signing. We're already there. Like May 25th, I believe, is the date. Memorial Day weekend. So, it's coming up. It is coming up. It'll be a great match, but Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul getting together like this. We'll find out. And maybe because Logan Paul wants that amazing payday that you get when you go to Saudi Arabia. That's a long ass flight. 19 hours from where I live. 19 hours. So I'm guessing, you know, the same for everyone else. Who knows? I, I, I wouldn't imagine that. But more storylines here on SmackDown that are building up. I love it so much. The bloodline continues with the storyline that Solo has informed Paul Heyman that he has spoken to Roman Reigns. And this blows Paul Heyman's mind. It broke his heart probably a little bit because we have been informed that Paul Heyman has not talked to Roman Reigns since WrestleMania. And we have seen people's cell phone footage online where Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman are hugging. And it's wonderful. And they do that. But now, Solo's informing Paul that he's talked to Roman. I don't believe him. I think he's lying. I think he's a big old fat lion. Cowardly lion from Wizard of Oz. I'm not sure what it has to do with anything. But I love that Solo is tricking Paul Heyman. He's so desperate. And Paul Heyman in the background. After the King of the Ring qualifying matches, he's doing the ones. He's like, yeah, see? See? I'm doing the ones, guys. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. But the day that Roman Reigns, his music hits, and he saves Paul Heyman from the living hell that he's involved with. Oh, Roman Reigns versus Solo in the storyline. Because that's what I'm saying. We're obviously building to a storyline. Paul Heyman's being held hostage by Solo in his new bloodline. And Paul just wants the old ways. Solo even suggested, and I love it so much, that Paul kind of was looking at Jay Uso in France at Backlash. Like, help with his eyes, not with his mouth, his eyes. Like, you know, blink twice for help. Was he? I would love to see Jay Uso get back with Jimmy Uso, get back with Sami Zayn to save Paul Heyman from this bloodline. And when they can't do it, they call upon the big dog himself, 
Roman Reigns to save the day. Hope it happens. But I love the storyline. I love. I know people were like, oh well, the new the new bloodline stings. You had to evolve, and now we are evolving. And it's WrestleMania. There's always this little, you know, business is going great money wise, but you know, there's always going to be creative differences. There's no Rock. There's no Roman. No Seth Rollins. No Rhea Ripley. There's a lot of people missing, and that's not even just that's a couple people. Bobby Lashley's hurt. Uh, Drew McIntyre is hurt. CM Punk's hurt. A lot of people are hurt. A lot of people are hurt. Now, this comment now, I'm about to say, don't be offended by. That's a good warning to tell someone you're probably going to be offended. So in this Queen of the Ring tournament, Bianca Belair and Jade, who are the tag team champions for the women, are in the tournament. I get it because they're both huge stars. And maybe they're leading to a match between them, which everyone wants to see. But they're the tag team champions. To me, if you just won the tag team championship in Backlash, maybe, just maybe, you should be having a storyline with other tag teams. And I know there's not a lot of them. I get it. But maybe you could be building that. What seems to be is we wanted Jade to have a championship. We wanted Bianca to have a championship. So we just gave them the tag team titles. Ask is hurt. Another person who's hurt. So she couldn't keep defending the championships. Kabuki Warriors. The Emerson Show is kind of falling apart. So I don't mind Jade and Bianca in the tournament. It's just a little strange where they just won the championship. And now they're not in a tag team storyline. They're in a tournament to crown Queen of the Ring. And let me say something. If Bianca or Jade win the tournament, that's again great for them. But then what the hell does that mean for the titles? What does that mean for both of them? Because obviously if say Jade is the Queen of the Ring, wouldn't Bianca be a little jealous? Or if Bianca wins, wouldn't Jade be a little jealous? Everyone would be jealous. Who doesn't want to wear a crown and have a scepter and a robe? Who? So I'm not against the idea of having Bianca and Jade in this tournament at all because they have both won their matches. It's just a little strange to me. You just won the tag team titles. Maybe have a tag team storyline for you. Great moment. I love them both. But seriously, what's up with that? As uh, the Hurricane once said, what's up with that? What's up with that? But tonight, every match, as Sheamus and McIntyre love to say, a banger after a banger. After a banger, after a banger. It was all about King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring. Nia Jax beat Naomi. That Hurricanrana off the top. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Carmelo Hayes, who fought Cody Rhodes recently, beats Baron Corbin. And uh, this one hurt because I didn't want either man to lose because I like them. And Baron Corbin already was on, you know, Raw and SmackDown before. Had a lengthy run. He already was at NXT. They got brought up. And now he's... Ah, he lost to Carmelo Hayes. Not good. It's not good. Not good at all. Jade, as I talked about earlier, beat Piper Nevin. And then Bianca Belair beat Candice LeRae, who I like the progression of their characters, Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae, because Indy was a little dirty outside attacking the leg of Bianca Belair. So again, at least there's some storylines within the storylines. Because Bailey was backstage as well, praising and predicting who was going to win the Queen of the Ring tournament in these matches. And Chelsea Green and Piper Niven show up. Piper lost to Jade. But Chelsea, who recently had an NXT championship match, now are we leading down a Chelsea Green Bailey storyline? And just like the other matches with championships, it's obviously Bailey will win, but I do love Chelsea Green. So I kind of just erased all my points by saying that I love Chelsea Green. And that's okay. It's okay to love Curry Rose and Logan Paul and Bianca and Jay and all these storylines because it's okay. You can like it or you don't have to like it. It's up to you. It is up to you. Do you think? Don't let someone else tell you what's going on. Tamazanga beat Angelo Dawkins, who I think was strange because everyone's like, 
Oh, Montez Ford. Oh, Angelo. And I love Angelo too, but he lost. And Randy Orton beat AJ Styles. It was like a hidden pay-per-view premium love event match on a SmackDown. And we got it. And it was fun. But this whole tournament so far, rocking and rolling. But the storylines coming out of this for me really are the bloodline. Solo says he has spoken to Roman Reigns. I don't think he has. I don't think he has. And Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul is now one of the big matches heading into King and Queen of the Ring. What will happen next week with the contract signing? What storyline is it going to be? It, but if there's no storyline... It's going to be a badass match, though. So thumbs up to you, SmackDown. Thumbs up to you, and thank you so much for watching. Remember, this coming Monday, I have an interview with Mason Madden. He used to be Mace in the WWE. He was in Retribution. He was in Maximum Male Models. And he shares with me that he raised over 108 million shillings in Uganda for soft ground wrestling. My head bag exclusive comes out this Monday on Ringside News YouTube channel. Subscribe. Hit that notification button. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Steve Fall. Have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.